Uh, after many years uh, of having bioplastics in the industry, there is still a big confusion in uh, terms of concepts regarding bioplastics. Can you tell us briefly, please, uh, some of the main uh, keys to understand the, to the, the concepts of bioplastics, compostables, biodegradables, please? Yes. So, uh, bioplastics actually embraces two different concepts. One is the bio-based plastics or biomass plastics, and the other one is the biodegradable compostable plastics. Biomass, bio-based plastics speaks to the beginning of life of the plastic. It speaks to the origin of the carbon in that plastic, whether that carbon is coming from biomass plant material or is it coming from petrol fossil material okay. the value proposition there is that if you use biomass plant feedstocks then you have a neutral or zero carbon footprint. Then you come to the end of life what happens to the product after use when it goes into the waste stream there if you can design in biodegradability and better biodegradability in composting disposal systems or biodegradability in an anaerobic digester which gives energy and the digest state remaining can then be composted, you have a value proposition. The key point here is as follows. Bio-based biomass plastics is not necessarily biodegradable or compostable. For example, Brascam makes bio-based polyethylene from sugarcane. It has got a zero material carbon footprint. But the end of life is recycling. Why? Because bio-based polyethylene is not biodegradable or compostable. The same is with Coca-Cola's plant bottle. It has got bio-based plant material in it, up to 30%, coming from the PET component. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are again not biodegradable, compostable, but they are recyclable, and that is the end of life. PLA, polylactic acid, is an example of a bio-based biomass plastic. Tell us about a success stories of closed loop uh, examples that, that we can uh, get aware of bioplastics application. Yeah, so there's uh, several examples. Of course, like we indicated, uh, biodegradability by itself has no meaning unless you define a disposal system like composting and you therefore must also define the time, one year or less, or the time frame of a composting system. So here are some great examples. City of San Francisco, they have implemented a scheme where each resident and each of the uh, restaurants and other uh, public places have three bins. It's very popular in Europe, but. In, in San Francisco in the US. This is happening today. So you have a compostable bin and that bin will have a compostable certified by the uh, BPI or other certification organization to be used. You must put only compostables in there. And the price for that is going to be lower than the price for a non recyclable, non-compostable. And this has been, I think, around for a couple of years now. It's been very successful. Uh, the contact there is a person by the name of Jack Macy. He's done a great job making that happen. Uh, Seattle, the city of Seattle, requires that all its food waste and organic waste has to be separated and composted. So products which are used with that food waste, like uh, plastic ware, you know, spoons, utensils, the paper plates, that has to be fully biodegradable under composting conditions and certified. So there's a certification there and then it's removed and as another example. Several more which I think is great is apparently 
the Atlanta airport is putting out its bids for products to be used in their restaurants and food service areas to be completely compostable so they can take all of this over-the-counter food waste and all the other waste and then compost it. So we have to see how this evolves. But schools is another great example of how this can be implemented. In the, in the state of Minnesota, this is happening. So in school cafeterias, you use paper plates, you use uh, compostable uh, plastic cutlery and, and trays and other things so that they can be readily collected and composted in the school itself. It's a great education tool. So the children learn about the value of composting, learn about the value of sustainability, learn about how to close the loop. So it's a teaching movement as well as a, a waste, uh, environmentally responsible waste management. The schools and the other areas are going to save money. Unfortunately, that savings is reflected in the cost of what they do today, which is to collect, transport it, put it in a landfill and pay for it. So the challenge is to take those costs, which is for the disposal and transportation, and apply it into the front end of it to purchase or acquire products which are to be used along with the food and in cafeterias because these plastic products are going to be priced today 10-20% higher than your regular plastics.